Remember that time when I reviewed the Larda Neva 4x4 and nearly sunk it in a large lake? Yeah, that video went viral. Well, the same guys who were importing that vehicle strangely stopped when Ukraine became under attack from Russia. So they looked for something else to bring to British shores, something charismatically simple, rugged and quirky. And this is their answer, this little creature here. This is the Daihatsu Hijet Jumbo 4x4 from Japan. It's a little K-truck with a full low ratio four wheel drive system. And I'm gonna be driving this on the road but most interestingly, off the road to see what it's like. I'm Johnny Smith, you're watching The Late Break Show, and this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tire retailer. <laughs> In case you're wondering who Daihatsu are, well, they sold cars and little vans and stuff in the UK for years, but pulled out completely in 2011. They got bought out in 2016 in total by Toyota, who'd had a share in them since the 60s, actually, which meant we didn't have legends like the Sherrard Turbo, the Fortrack, the Copen, the Materia, the YRV Turbo, if you remember that weird thing, all these lovely little cars. Now Toyota is using their small car know-how, and hopefully we will see Daihatsu returning to the UK. But it's back in the UK by a private importer called Motoyama. And I want to talk about why this is so cool. For a start, it's a K truck. What that means, the K-Class in Japan, it means it's a certain dimension, has to have a certain engine. It's no more than 3.4 meters long, and it's no more than 1.5 meters wide. And under there, in the middle, basically under the driver's and passenger seat, or in between them, is a 658 cc three-cylinder engine. But as I said before, this particular version, this is called the Jumbo 4x4 because it has a four wheel drive system with low ratio selector in there. So it can actually off-road when fitted with decent tires and a lift kit, which this particular version has. If you're looking at this from a purely practical point of view, well, this bed is nearly two meters long, 1.99 meters long, because it goes underneath this part of the cab. So it's not a double cab, but it has a little bit more space for taller guys and women like me to drive it. And also you can still get lots of space in this bed. And these come down like so. Here we go. They go down like that. So you can load pallets onto there and all kinds of things, or even an idle chat brown leather chair, which I carry about periodically when I'm interviewing important people. I'll put a link above my head for a playlist, if in case you want to watch some interview stuff. Price is a key attraction for this Hijet Jumbo 4x4, aside from the fact that it looks cool and quirky. And let's face it, the whole JDM thing is in vogue at the moment. The price of this is incredible. So £16,000 plus VAT it starts at, but if you want a lightly used one, like it's got a thousand kilometers on it or something, and a really high grade used vehicle from Japan, you get one from £14,500 plus VAT. This is the top spec Trek version, which is 19 and a half grand. That has a four inch lift kit. It's got 14 inch alloys. They look massive, but they're only 14s. And those Maxxis worm drive all-terrain tires for extra off-road ability, which we are going to test in the next couple of hours, mark my words. Now, when it comes to needing new tires for your car, whether you go on road, off road, whether you want sports car grip and performance, or you just want sheer economy, head to the Black Circles website. Head to the Black Circles website, enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode, and then you'll find the most suitable tires for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tires from real customers to help you choose the best tires for your car. And with the Black Circle's click and fit service with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. Right, time for some K action. Push button start, normal handbrake. Honestly, the, the turning circle on the high jet 
jumbo is amazing and I guess it accentuates it because you're forward of the wheel, you're sat on the wheel. Cab over engine as they call it, or co, or Sebastian as I call it. Going down these sort of like gravel, you know, back roads, you do feel like you're sort of floating. It's got amazing suspension travel and it is comfortable. You get that kind of nose hobby horsing like that, but you get that in a lot of separate chassis body cars. You used to get that a bit in the Jimny and you definitely got it in things like the original Defender. It's so Jimny-ish, I have to say. Gear shift is really light and uh, steering's very light. Both are, are very similar to the gym. Um, I will tell you how quick it is in a minute. I'll do a zero to 62, but don't expect anything incredible. Five speed, like a Jimny. Quite gutless, like a Jimny, but I was expecting it to be gutless. You have to wring it out and you just enjoy it. Now this particular version is the top spec, as I said, the Trek, which means it has the chunkier tires and the higher um, suspension lift, which means it probably will be a bit more lollopy and there is more road noise. You can hear that, can't you? That's tire noise. Actually, in terms of like, in terms of noise coming through the cab, it feels really good. So I'm in two wheel drive. Actually, do you know what? Let's, let's, let's do a zero to 62. Right, you ready, Johnny? Let's do this. <laughs> Bury it. It honestly sounds, it still sounds like a, a bit of a, a 911. Oh my God, 45 has never felt so ambitious. Am I gonna get to 60 before this road? I think I might have shifted too early. No, I'm, I'm not gonna get to 60 before I have to brake. Well, anyway, so it isn't quick, but we knew it wasn't gonna be quick, but it kind of feels like it wants to please. And it's a different kind of uh, mindset when you drive one of these sorts of cars. It's not about kind of like, it's not about driving them carefully in a way. It's about kind of like thrashing them. It's a thrashability. But I'm gonna do a UE. Look at that for a U-turn. Oh my word. Put yourself in the mind of, I don't know, a farmer or a contractor. A lot of people buy pickup trucks as a bit of a tax break and I totally understand the benefits. This is not gonna be a family car because it can only cope with two people. And the payload is obviously smaller than a big pickup and it can't tow three and a half tons like a big pickup. But if you look at how much money people are paying for the Gators and U UTV type vehicles, which are road legal, but you'd never be able to drive one on the motorway, which you can do with this. This is actually really comfortable. And although you're getting that tire noise from these Maxxis worm drive all terrains, you don't have to buy it with these tires. These are optional. In fact, you don't have to have it with 14 inch wheels. You can have it with 13s or even 12s, I think. You realize when you get to a hill in fifth, you've got to shift down. There just isn't the torque available. But I do like the gearbox. And this is as far back as the seat goes. So bear in mind, you know, I'm six foot three and it would be nice to have a little bit more uh, room. It's not gonna be so bad unless I'm on a long journey, but the, it's great to have electric windows, but the pod for the electric windows is kind of where my right knee would want a bit more space. There's loads of elbow room for me. And these seats are quite squishy with their integral headrest. Brakes are good. And because it's so slabs fronted and sided, it's really easy to position on the road. And uh, it kind of feels like it's going to understeer really easily, which maybe it is. Um, but you'd be a fool to try and drive this at VMAX around every corner because it's, it's high. And it's got that blimmin' great cage on it, which I wouldn't want to catch on a tree. It's a separate chassis body setup, just like a trad 4x4. And everything's really exposed, which is great for me when I'm trying to show you. So there's the engine, it's sort of about there. That 658cc triple, I think it's naturally aspirated. But what's really cool about this is the fact that it can actually, it sits quite high up, 
and the ground clearance is obviously massive so it can actually go over off-road um, bits and bobs but the other thing I like about it is it's ULES compliant which is handy when you're based in London which is where the importers of this car are based it has 111 grams per kilometer and it does about 52 miles per gallon combined tiny engine tiny consumption also fits in gaps in traffic and congestion because that's what the K-Class is for. Now I know we said it was simple and charming and it is charming but it's not as simple as you think this little high jet. For a start it's got the autonomous emergency braking up there and the auto headlights. It's got keyless entry so I can just get in there. It's got keyless start stop right there and it's got things like the push button for the four-wheel drive there's your low ratio, high ratio lever for the four wheel drive system. It's got a USB, one, two, three cup holders, air conditioning, a dashboard, a big plinth to put everything on. And don't get me wrong, the plastics and everything, they're okay. They're not brilliant. They remind me of the Jimny. They're just quite kind of like utilitarian, but I'm okay with that because it's a very honest vehicle. And of course, back here, because you've got this slight extension of the cab, I can recline my seat a bit more, which is good for tall people. And there's a ledge to store more stuff inside just here. No carpets or anything like that. Just these trough rubber mats that you can kick out and this like vinyl covering that's just crinkled. And underneath there, as I said before, is that mighty 658 cc engine. Right, now I'm going to go off-road, four-wheel drive in, and I'm actually going to put it in low because I just don't want to get stuck. How good is the Hijet Jumbo 4x4 off-road? I know that in Japan, they're really keen on doing overlanding in these jobs. They really love them. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of wading just to get my, dip my toe in. This is fairly mild. It's been raining loads, so everything's a little bit softer underfoot. <laughs> Low range box is great because it, it obviously means that you don't have to have tons of of power and torque, which you don't have with this little three cylinder motor. Comes up on the dash as four by four. And uh, forgot to say when you're on the road, of course, that having the taller tires means you've got taller gearing than if these were 12 or 13 inch rims. Um, but of course you can choose. And you can choose to have the roof rack on. The roof rack's gonna get clobbered now. That's that big roof rack that's an option. I think I might've just broken a branch. Let's do some wading. Oh, isn't this gorgeous? You can hear everything under the cab. Got the skid plate there for protection. I can lock the diff if I needed to on, on the heavier duty stuff. And the exhaust is really tight to the chassis at the back. <laughs> I'm starting to think that low range might actually be this car's sweet spot because although the taller gearing helps it you know on the open roads and definitely makes it a more mature vehicle than a gator or something like that look at this it's just it scrabbles no problem but you you really accentuates the movement because i'm in a cab over over the wheel it feels like you're going to topple when you're not just takes a bit of getting used to i haven't driven a cab over engine for ages who would have thought that maybe the coolest little off-road vehicle is actually a, a pickup and i'm not even into pickups i don't particularly like pickup trucks i just see them most of the time as being a bit of a waste of space in the uk anyway the pickup culture's massive i know but this is sort of different its footprint is small its payload is ample it's MPG's impressive. The bloody thing's got so many um, mod cons, really. And also, if you turned up at a cars and coffee type event or Bista Scramble or... People would really, really want to know more. They would want to know more about this. Then look how, look how well this behaves just on sort of a dirt track. It's not, it's a fairly smooth dirt track, but look how well it behaves. 
suspension's wonderful and this is this is the highest it can go this is the four inch farm lift which you're gonna have aren't you who wants a two inch lift when you can have a four inch lift you know right it's time for some mud now now i think this is going to be a walk in the park in low range but it's like i said before it has been raining and it is very very soft and you slither but because it's so light it doesn't get bogged down because it you know unlike a big heavy land rover or similar which although is very capable and very talky and powerful it's heavy this is the opposite it's just a little goat it's why cars like the Jimny do so well steep bank second gear straight over straight over and straight into some water and now we're onto some clay which doesn't look much but it's extremely soft and claggy you know a bit like when you have a curry and you can't wipe your back door properly did i just say that out loud right we're going to go down into some depths of and when you go down like this you really feel in this like you're going to have an incident with the front nose still in second actually still in second slithering up these sort of wet leaves and still in second this is brilliant this is flipping brilliant here we go into the jungle there we go there's the roof sorry paint now we're going to traverse which is yeah traverse traverse oh hang on right i'm gonna to have to do a hill start because it's so soft it's taking me down there so will it climb will it do a hill start hang on it's embarrassing if i get it Ah, oh, shit, I've got it stuck. It's, it's so soft, I think going over the same route two or three times, it's... Right, I can't... Oh, bollocks. I didn't get it stuck the first time. I've gone around for a second time, being all confident. And uh, it's so, so... Because of all this rain we've had, it's so soft. Right, let's do this. Come on, you mountain, you JDM goat. Oh my word. <laughs> yes! Fucking yes! Yes! I really thought that was gonna that was gonna end our day. Right, well, uh, there we go. I haven't broken it. A seriously impressive low range. Just a seriously impressive little JDM mountain goat. We've done medium, medium spec uh, wading so far. I want to take it on a couple of muddy ruts over there and we'll just see what happens. Hi, horse, how you doing? But this is the thing, you know, the, the aim is that this could appeal to farmers just in a, you know, really practical way. Okay, this is very soft. Can we get up here? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay. This... This is the remnants of an off-road course here, but it's deeply overgrown. The high jet cannot be stopped, I don't think. But don't totally take my word for it. What do we think of the high jet? Let me know in the comments. Is this a fantastic, like I said in the title, is it charismatic? Is it simple and rugged? And obviously it's quirky. It's not going to appeal to everybody. But it does a lot really well, doesn't it? 
let's just give it another tickle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little wash. Little wash here, look. <laughs> it's always a bit disconcerting when you hear sloshing coming from directly under your seat. So this is all well and good, casual bit of stream wading. But one thing I haven't done is any deep wading yet because I kind of have flashbacks of the Neva incident. I've got one last lake to try. What's the worst that could happen? Right. Right, I said I needed to do some proper wading. That time has come. This is the deepest, uh, this is the deepest one. I'm a bit nervous after what happened with the Neva, um, but I've been assured this will be okay. Here goes nothing. Create the bow wave. Shit, that feels really deep. Shit, I'm in now. I'm in. Come on, little, little warrior. <laughs> Bloody hell, that felt like I'd driven really deeply, but no lights have come on. I turned off parking sensors because they go crackers when you're off-roading, as you'd imagine. Right, well, we've got to get back because it's a one-way one street here. Here we go. Gosh, I've put the window down just in case. Okay. Oh gosh, the front feels like it's nose diving so hard. Oh man. Come on, hijack jumbo 4x4. <laughs> yes! That's a seriously good bit of kit, isn't it? There is something toy-like about K cars like this, like the hijack jumbo, but you know, as kind of comical and cartoonish as it looks, there's a lot of substance to this thing, right? It's incredible off-road, way better than I was expecting. It's fun on road and it's priced in a way where nothing can really get near it. Who's gonna buy it though? Farmers, tradespeople, or hobbyists like me who just want an excuse to buy a unique but kind of rugged, charismatic vehicle? I don't know. I'd love you to tell me in the, in the suggestions. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, why not subscribe? Or maybe you want to become a Patreon and you can watch videos like this earlier than most others. I'm really tempted to buy one of these now. <laughs> From 14 grand plus that. But would you go for the big lift? And would you go for the big wheels? And would you go for the full rack? I don't know. Whatever. It's a great thing, isn't it?